Hi, horn players. I'm Professor Smith, and I teach at Casper College and the University of Wyoming. I also am principal horn of the Wyoming Symphony and fourth horn of the Cheyenne Symphony. And today, I'm going to talk to you a little about how to practice the excerpts for your Allstate auditions. My hope in this video is that you'll not only get tools to practice these specific excerpts, but also that this can help to embolden your creativity in the practice room in general. There are so many tools to practicing, um, th they are simply endless. And so I really want to show you just a few of them today. One of the best ways that you can approach practicing is by having small goals. So maybe pick two or three of the elements that I address and make sure that those two or three elements are really, really solid and at a pretty good tempo. Um, and once you get to that point, then you can start adding a few of the other elements. Um, go at your own pace. Um, take your time. Try to really enjoy the nerdiness of breaking this all down. So the first element we're going to talk about today is rhythm. In excerpt number one, um, and if I were you, I would grab excerpt number one. I have it right here. What you need to know is that the quarter note is not what you're really going to be maintaining here. It's going to be the eighth note. So the way we do that is we take that quarter note equals 130, and because a eighth note is twice as fast as a quarter, we put our metronome on the eighth note. And we do everything else based on that. What is a sixteenth in relationship to an eighth? I'll give you a minute to think about that. How much is a sixteenth as, a, as compared to an eighth? It's half. Half of an eighth is a sixteenth. So you'll take that beat, whatever beat you're on, and you'll divide it into two, and that is your sixteenth. So if this is an eighth, those are sixteenths that I'm singing. And then twice of a of an eighth is what? If you take fractions, you take one eighth plus one eighth. What do you get? You get a quarter. So two of those, da. Da, 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 da. Two of those are a quarter. And now, that's all you have in here, right? Just eighths, sixteenths, and quarters, and that's it. So you're ready to start. Um, because this is a little complicated, be really modest and conservative at the beginning of your practice with this. Start at a really, just the slowest tempo you need. Be really patient with yourself. So, let's say... This is our eighth note. Take a look at the first excerpt. And I'm going to sing the rhythms of the first two measures. Da, 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 di, da, di, da, 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 do, 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 do. Again, that was the first two measures twice in a row, just in case it wasn't clear. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Do that step first. Do that step, and um, really, the rest of it will fall so, so, so much easier in place. After you get it really good, and maybe you can what, do what's called chunking, so you can do just the first line, or the first two lines, or the first three lines minus a, um, a measure, so from measure one to measure 17. Um, to that before that forte. Maybe you can do that chunk and work the tempo up to where you can sing it with the metronome accurately at a faster tempo. So twice of, this excerpt says quarter note equals 130. Two times 130 is 260, right? That's the speed that they want your eighth note at. My suggestion is that you get it up to not quite that speed and work all the elements up a little bit under tempo. Um, so around eighth note equals 200. 
make that your goal. Or even eighth note equals 180. Um, whatever you feel that you are able to achieve at a high level, um, that's going to get you so far if you're really just, you want to have integrity with everything that you do. Um, it also helps to feel pretty good about yourself. You accomplish something that's very clear. So that's step number one, rhythm. And the second step is to add fingerings to that rhythm. You might have to slow down the metronome once again in order to make sure that you're really nailing those fingerings along with the rhythms. So you can do these fingerings on your hand. You can bring your horn out and you can hold your horn in your lap and finger along. I wouldn't recommend holding it up. That starts to kind of build tension after a while. So keep it on your lap, but finger along. Um, note the mistakes that maybe you make along the way. If you need to circle one or you need to write in a fingering that you repeatedly aren't quite getting right, go ahead. You might need to slow it down, as I said. So I'll do just two measures of this for you. Do, 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 do. Those are the first two measures. The next step that we have is the air. The air is the most important part of the physical technique of the horn. Without air, nothing we do would work, <laughs> right? We could have the perfect embouchure. We could have the perfect uh, fingering, and we could have the perfect articulation. Our rhythm could be just like spot on. Um, it means nothing without using air. So this next part you can do totally separately. Um, obviously, rhythm is going to be a huge part of it, so you want to have your rhythm down first. Um, and then after you get this, the air down, um, you can add fingerings onto that. What I mean by air is the shape of the air that is going to be going into the horn to create the shape of the music. We've got accents and staccatos, right? Um, and the air, and we've got slurs. And the air is the most important part um, of what we do. It wouldn't mean anything without it. So we're gonna take the back of our hand. We're just gonna blow our air onto the back of our hand. Now we wanna add some accents. So that's gonna be some bursts. Uh, the air stream will still be fairly intact, but we're gonna burst it along the way, nudge it with a little extra burst of air. So. Right? When we're doing this, because our air is not being captured and focused, it's going to use a lot of air. You're just going to have to take a lot of breaths. Next up we have is the notes. Now that we really have the fingerings down and that's not going to hinder us, um, and we are working on the air aspect, we want to make sure that we can really hear each and every note. So the first thing we got to do is find our first note, right? So it's an E. This is kind of a long term concept, but I like to make sure that I can always taste a middle C. If we can taste a middle C, then we can always find whatever note it is that we are going to be actually starting on from there by going up or down the scale. So our first note is an E, which is two notes above a middle C, right? C, D, E. <laughs> Right? So our first note is this one, so we have to find that note. What I would suggest is totally taking all time out and putting the same rhythm on every single note and slurring between all of it. No articulation. So you take all of those other elements away. So it'll sound, the first two measures will sound like this. <laughs> So you work on making sure you find that. If you're not totally sure whether you are getting the notes correct, um, you can do what I just said and find middle C and work your way up to it and just make sure that that's right. 
Uh, you can go to the piano if you can read it. The way to read it on the piano is down a fifth. The next thing I would say is that it is helpful if you play an A minor scale. I know you don't have to play your A, your minor scales, um, but I'll give you a hint. No sharps, no flats, starts on an A, goes up by step up to an A. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Because that is the key this piece is in. So if you can get your ear already hearing in the correct key, that is huge. So here's what this A minor scale sounds like. That's your A minor scale. And that's how you approach notes, in a nutshell. The second excerpt is in D major. So you will want to play a D major scale so that your ear can already hear where you're going. Where are you going in this? The one really excellent breath that you're going to get in this first excerpt is the very, very first one. So make sure you start from a place of, of being as relaxed as possible. The best way to do that is to exhale first. Exhale all of the empty of your air out of your lungs and start from there. Start your breath from there. You've got as much time as you want. I would take two full quarter notes, so a whole half note, um, to breathe at this beginning. That's just my suggestion. Now, where you breathe will depend on the tempo that you're at. So perhaps, mm, first of all, you always want to mark in pencil. Definitely always in pencil so that you can change stuff later if you need to. Um, and second of all, um, perhaps wait to really choose where exactly you're going to breathe until you find um, your tempo that you're going to at least try to be relatively at. You will notice in the other excerpts that I am breathing only where the slurs end. So right there, right the beginning right there and you can see again I really wanted to make sure I took a huge breath there um, my guess is that you're gonna need to breathe more often than that so my suggestion is every two bars so let's see here's the beginning da 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 That's my suggestion. That breathing scheme for the entirety of that whole excerpt, especially when you have to make that huge crescendo into a forte. I have decided to slur the scales. I always tell my students to slur the scales. Um, if you go in there and they're like, why are you slurring the scales? Tell them to refer to my video. Um, slurring, well, there are many, many reasons for it, but that's my recommendation. It really helps to make sure that the air is really, 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 really smooth. And scales are some of the best ways to practice anything in general. Um, so I'd recommend slurring those scales. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck. Have fun in this process. Um, practicing can be really rewarding. Um, give yourself a pat on the back every time you really accomplish um, a rhythm that you had a hard time with or um, you're able to move the metronome up um, another increment um, or you're able to hit a lot of those notes or you're able to get those accents or whatever. Um, each milestone is really important so congratulate yourself on it. You, you've earned it um, and when you go in there just enjoy it and know that you know, practice time is over, sit down, do it, have fun. I hope to see you at Allstate in January.